This is the video demonstration on diluted earnings per share. In this video, I'm going to work the solution to example number three. This example involves the Baxter Company, and it says we've been provided with the following information in regard to their common stock. Now, it looks like their common stock actually fluctuated throughout the year. And whenever that happens in a company, that certainly complicates things. I can see they began on January 1st, initial balance, 50,000 shares. And then it stayed that way until April the 1st when they issued an additional 20,000 shares. And it stayed that way until July the 1st until they bought back 10,000 shares. And then finally on November 1st, they issued another 5,000 shares for cash. So there's quite a bit of activity there in terms of ups and downs and, and fluctuations in the amount of stock that they had throughout the year. Now it goes on to say that on December 31st, they reported a $670,000 net income. They do not sell preferred stock. They do have some outstanding stock options, and these are outstanding for 25,000 shares at an option price of $15 per share. The current market price of their stock is $25. They also sold $10,000 in 8% convertible bonds. Each bond has a face value of $1,000 and is convertible into five shares of common stock and the company happens to be in a 30% tax bracket. So in terms of requirements, number one, we are to calculate the weighted average number of shares. Number two, we're going to calculate the basic earnings per share, or EPS. And then number three, we're going to calculate the diluted earnings per share. Now for part one, this is where we're going to calculate the weighted average number of shares. To do this, I've set this up in advance with four columns, dates outstanding, the shares, the fraction, and weighted shares. Now, first of all, dates outstanding. Initially, we start out with a certain amount of stock that is from January 1st until April 1st. So basically, January 1st until April 1st. And during that length of time, how many shares do they have? 50,000 shares. So that's going to be 50,000. Now, in terms of a fraction, that is from January 1st until April 1st. So essentially January, February, March. So 3 out of 12 months. The next level is from April 1st until July 1st. Or 4-1 to 7-1. At that level, it says they issued an additional 20,000 shares. So that adds on another 20,000 to the initial 50,000, bringing the total level of stock to 70,000 shares. And that's true from April until July. So basically, April, May, June, another three months. Then it stays the same from July 1st until November 1st. So 7-1 until 11-1. Now, at that level, they bought back 10,000 shares. So that actually reduces the overall amount down to 60,000. And that was true from July 1 to the 1st of November. So July, August, September, October. Four months. Four out of 12. And then finally, the final interval will be from November 1st until the end of the year on December 31st. And it says during that time they issued an additional 5,000. So that raises the 60 up to 65,000. And that was for the final two months, November and December. And by the way, when you end up with all your fractions, a good thing to do to just go back and double check that you did your fractions right is all these fractions should add up to 1. So 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 2 is 12, and 12 out of 12, 12 twelfths is 1. So that's correct. So now I'm ready to get my weighted shares. So basically I have 3 divided by 12, and I'm going to multiply that by 50,000. So that gives me 12,500. And then again, 3 divided by 12, this time multiplied by 70,000, 
gives me 17,500. And then 4 divided by 12 times 60,000 gives me 20,000. And then 2 divided by 12 times 65,000. And that gives me 10,833. And then I'll just literally just total up all these four levels. And that gives me 60,833. So what that means is, even though the stock changed, you know, we had 50,000, then 70, then 60, then 65, it fluctuated up and down throughout the year. We're saying that the weighted average amount was really 60,833 shares. So that completes part one, the weighted average. Now for the second part, we're going to calculate the basic EPS. Now the formula for basic EPS is net income minus preferred dividends divided by the weighted average number of shares. Well one nice thing about this example, it said they do not sell preferred stock. So that means I don't really have to worry about those preferred dividends. So really all I have to do is just say net income divided by weighted average number of shares. So in this case the net income was given to me 670,000. So that's the net income. What about the weighted average number of shares? Well we calculated that on part one. 60,833. So all I have to do is take that net income and divide it by that number of shares and I get 11.01. .01. So that tells me that the basic EPS or basic earnings per share is $11.01. Or in other words, they made $11 and a penny on every share of stock in terms of net income. So that takes care of part two, EPS. Now for part three, they also want us to calculate the diluted earnings per share. Now the diluted earnings per share is going to be an answer that's less than the regular earnings per share. And the difference is with diluted, we're going to take into consideration all potential stock. And it looks like we have a couple of things there that we have to worry about. The company does have some outstanding stock options, and they also have some convertible bonds. So both of those things are going to be areas of concern that we're going to have to deal with. So on the diluted EPS, we're going to have to figure out the stock options. Then we're going to have to figure out the convertible bonds. And then once we figure that out, then we can go back and redo the EPS under the diluted EPS. So in terms of stock options, let's go back and read that information. It says they have stock options outstanding for 25,000 shares at an option price of $15 per share and the current market price is 25. So basically, if everyone exercised the stock options all at once, that's 25,000 shares that we have to come up with. But they do at least have to pay us the option price. Now, I said the option price per share was $15. So how much money am I going to bring in just from that? Well, just from that, I'm going to bring in $375,000. Unfortunately, $375,000 at the current market price is not going to be enough money to buy 25,000 shares. But how many shares could I buy? Well, if I'm going to have 375,000, the current market price of the stock is $25. So 375,000 divided by 25, that tells me that just from the money that comes in, I can use that money and come up with 15,000 shares. Unfortunately, that's not quite enough. I have to come up with 25,000 shares. So if I have to come up with 25,000 shares and I can afford to buy 15, how many do that, does that leave for me to have to provide on my own 10,000? So ultimately, from these stock options, I'm going to have to provide 10,000 additional shares. So that takes care of that, and of course, we're going to use that 10,000 again when we do our diluted EPS. Now, 
convertible bonds. Let's go back and see what they told us about the convertible bonds. Said that they sold $10,000 in 8% convertible bonds. Each bond has a face value of 1000 and is convertible into five shares of common stock. The company's in a 30% bracket. So in this case, in total, they've sold $10,000 worth of bonds. Now, if everybody converted their bonds, I'm going to save a little bit of money. How much money? Well, I'm going to save the interest payments. Now, the interest rate was 8%, so 8% is 0.08. So what is the interest amount that I have to normally pay on that 10000 Normally, I'm paying $800 interest on those bonds. If everyone converted, I could avoid that, and that would add $800 to my income. But I don't actually make a full $800 because it says the company's in a 30% tax bracket. So if I make $800 more, it's going to raise my taxes. So of that $800, how much of that money will I actually get to keep? Well, if I'm in a 30% bracket, I get to keep 70% of the money. So 70% of $800 is $560. So it will raise my income an additional $560. So that takes care of the income effect. But what about the share effect? Well, again, $10,000 worth of bonds, but it said each bond had a $1,000 face value. So if I sold $10,000 worth of $1,000 bonds, that means in total I've actually sold 10 bonds. And it said that each bond could be converted into five shares of stock. So what that means is I'm going to have to come up with 50 additional shares of stock. So that's the effect of the convertible bonds. So now I'm ready to calculate my diluted earnings per share. Now what was my net income previously? Previously it was right here, 670000 But this time it's going to be what? It's going to be 670560 Now why is it that amount? Because it's going to be the initial net income plus the extra income of $560. That's where that comes from. And I'm going to divide by what number of shares? Well, in this case, originally I had 60,833 shares. But then I want to add to that an extra 10,000 for the stock options and an extra 50 for the convertible bonds. So that's going to be 70,883. And that's just my initial number of shares plus the additional 10,000 and the additional 50. So ultimately, I'm going to have that net income divided by that number of shares. That gives me the new diluted EPS of only 946. So basically, they're going to report a basic EPS of $11.01 and a diluted EPS of $9.46. So that completes part three, and that completes the example on diluted earnings per share.